issues and uh, influx of foreigners, immigration policy, all this you know, have been um, on the, in the forefront recently, a lot of people talking about it. What's your take on the issue? Um, I would just say in general that what the government really needs to do is to put themselves into the shoe of these people, understand their pain, hear their grouses out and think of more inclusive policy of what they can do about it. Yeah, because um, it is easy to say that, oh, it's probably not affecting a lot of people, some people are affected. But I think on the ground, if you are really with the people on the ground, living it like them, then you will really feel the pain. Even previously, we are talking about 18, 20,000 um, new citizens a year and now they are saying that um, to be ideal is probably 25,000. Of course people will raise the eyebrow and they were saying that oh we are really getting so much problem in the past and now after GE one year later you are saying that maybe we need actually even more. But of course I think if you look at that um, in totality there are a few issues. One is citizens, new citizens that we actually need. The other one that actually has been causing quite a bit of a problem are the people here on employment short term work employment, contracts and so on. Um, and yeah, you're talking about one and a half million or more of these people in the workforce. And, and these are the numbers that actually are much, much larger compared to that 25,000. But back to this 25,000 issue, see, I'm, I'm not against foreigner, but my concern is always that when we bring new people in, how well do we do the integration process? And, you know, I'm, I'm a business person and I always believe that in a business environment, um, when there's monopoly, sometimes people tend to slack a bit. But once the competitions start to come in, they'll start to be alert to, to the situations. They start to wonder, so why are they losing the support? So they will have to react more proactively. So I would say, you know, um, that there are certain positive changes that has happened in this one year, such as the minister's pay review, and um, various responses to, for example, housing or hospitalization issues and so on. Whether that is sufficient, you know, it's still some time to go. Um, but the government responding to it is really thanks to the people, thanks to them um, making their voices heard. Um, the party has to make certain decisions, unpleasant, however it may be. Um, but I think it's also tells the people what the party stands for. So anybody who wants to be in the party then has to be mindful that there is a certain level of expectations. It's firstly, it's very speculative questions. We do not know if it's Amokyo or it's some other GRCs or if that is um, something that is going to materialise. What we are very focused on right now is outcome because we've, we have an obligation to the outcome voters and that we will defend very, very staunchly. And as to other constituencies, I think we have to see the situations, whether um, it is suitable for us to be there yeah, um, it's too premature to say anything about it. And I think more importantly is, I think it's the responsibility of the Prime Minister to call for an outcome by elections as soon as possible because I cannot think of any good reason for holding this back. What did the election really mean for you? For me, uh, GE 2011 has been very special because I have been a fairly last minute um, entrant into the opposition. I've been a closet opposition for a while, although I've been writing the forum and all that. It is a very big step coming forward into this totally unknown world and I'm very glad I took this step. People ask me, oh, the, the anniversary is here, what does it mean to me? To me, the 7th of May is just another day because there's a lot more things to be done and a lot more things to learn and a lot more that we have to do to get to where we are before we can really call this a first world parliament. Mm -hmm.